The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is widely considered to be one of the greatest games ever produced. Since the game's release in 1998, it's received many awards and ranks highly among fans and critics alike. Ocarina of Time had a lasting impact on gaming, having introduced mechanics such as Z-targeting. However, not every impact it's had has been positive. Ocarina of Time was home to one of the hardest and most confusing dungeons in Zelda thus far, the Water Temple. The Water Temple is notoriously difficult. There's an abundance of articles, videos, and forum discussions as to why it's so bad. Here are a few of the most common reasons why gamers disliked this aquatic dungeon. First of all, it was difficult to navigate, and it didn't help that the two-dimensional map did a poor job at representing the layout in 3D space. A map much more similar to the one in Metroid Prime may have done a better job at showing how each room related to each other, but a new map by itself won't fix a broken level. Second of all, the dungeon's battles and puzzles weren't necessarily challenging, but they were time-consuming. As some critics of Ocarina of Time have pointed out, the game used the mechanic of waiting to simulate difficulty. Waiting for an opening to attack the enemy. Waiting to open chests. Waiting for the song to finish playing so you can warp to a new location. The Water Temple was filled with more waiting than any other level in the game. You had to wait for Zelda's lullaby to finish playing before the water level would change. You had to stop, pause the game, navigate through the menu to equip the iron boots. Then you had to wait as you slowly sink to the bottom. The fact that you had to do this over and over and over again made this one of the most tedious levels in Zelda history. Thirdly, the sheer amount of backtracking to the central hub room and the Triforce symbols necessary to change the water level had the ability to make gamers feel like they weren't playing the game correctly. Even if you've played the level before and knew the best way to complete it, you still had considerable backtracking to do. This is by no means a comprehensive list, and is simply meant to provide a framework for understanding this level's unique spot in the Zelda universe. The Water Temple, with all of its imperfections, played a surprisingly important role in the Zelda series. Its greatest contribution wasn't its puzzles or level design, but how it helped shape Zelda's cultural framework. Cultural framework is a term used in the social sciences to describe traditions, value systems, myths, and symbols that are common in a given society. In a way, this concept has existed in The Legend of Zelda for some time now. You may know it better as the Zelda formula, a collection of traditions, gameplay mechanics, and symbols that are common to Zelda games. Some common pieces of the formula include a pointy-eared hero in green, a princess named Zelda, gameplay that features adventuring, sword fighting, and magic, a creation myth involving goddesses, and a sacred relic known as the Triforce. The Water Temple contributed to this framework by raising the standard of difficulty for the series. Difficulty in Zelda typically manifests itself in three distinct forms. Combat difficulty, which is when enemies are tough. Puzzle difficulty, which is when you really have to think hard to find a solution. And navigation difficulty, which is when you experience trouble finding your way around. Software developer Gareth Rees does a great job at explaining why the Water Temple is considered to be one of the hardest dungeons. None of the individual puzzles are hard. The difficulty of the dungeon is almost entirely in the navigation. There were several design features that contributed to player confusion. The central hub room was highly symmetric, which made it easy to become disoriented. The middle and top ledges of the central hub were very similar. It was very easy to forget which is which. It was also easy to forget which rooms were accessible at certain water levels which resulted in backtracking to a Triforce symbol to change the water level again. The Water Temple excelled in navigational difficulty and fans did not like it. For some fans, the challenges presented in this level were enough to eclipse the positive aspects of the game. If you do a quick search on the internet, you will often find the Water Temple associated with words like infamous, dreaded, and awful. The Water Temple has even earned itself an entry on Urban Dictionary that reads, <coughs> considered by many to be the equivalent to a complete rectal examination. Although it's quite overdramatic to compare the Water Temple to a colonoscopy, the emotion behind the Urban Dictionary definition continues to haunt gamers to this day. Ocarina of Time was released in 1998. 
During the 16 years since its original release, 11 new titles, not including remakes and re-releases, were added to the series. Yet somehow, gamers have been unable to forget about their bad experiences with the Water Temple. The Water Temple's bad reputation has led subsequent water-themed levels to be judged with much more scrutiny than any other themed level. This bias has caused gamers to look for the same issues in each new Zelda. When similarities are found, they trigger memories of how bad Ocarina of Time's Water Temple was, and makes us think about how bad this new level could have been. Luckily for gamers, Zelda learned from past mistakes and has fixed several of these problems. Let's take a look at several water-themed levels that have come out since Ocarina of Time, and how they have solved, or retained, the issues that plagued the Water Temple. Majora's Mask's water level, Great Bay Temple, shared many similarities with Ocarina of Time's Water Temple. For one thing, it used the same game engine, which caused the two games to look and play very similar to each other. However, the problem of equipping and unequipping the Iron Boots was fixed, thanks to the Zora Mask. When equipped, Link was able to move through water much easier. It allowed him to swim really fast, and sink to the bottom by pressing the B button. This mitigated many of the time-consuming problems that plagued the Water Temple. It was difficult to track down all of the stray fairies, and going down the wrong tube required the player to backtrack through the level. But the biggest complaint players seemed to have was with Georg, the dungeon boss. Many people found this fish to be one of the hardest bosses in the franchise. The biggest difference with Great Bay Temple is that people actually said positive things about it. It had a sense of fun, and the industrial theme behind it was pretty cool too. While it's easy to pass it off as simply the Water Temple version 2.0, Great Bay Temple set itself apart from its predecessor, and was a step in the right direction. Wind Waker really didn't contain a water level. The closest that the game had was the Tower of the Gods, which only featured a few water puzzles on the first floor. However, even without a water level, Wind Waker learned from the mistakes of the past and brought a vital change to the Iron Boots. They became an item that could be equipped to the X, Y, or Z buttons. This made wearing them much easier than ever before and didn't require frequent trips to the start screen. Twilight Princess's Lake Bed Temple shared some functional similarities with the Water Temple. For example, it had a hub room which got revisited often. After completing the puzzles down one path, the player would travel back to the hub room to pick another path to complete. This hub room was much more interactive than its Ocarina of Time counterpart, with the player moving the central stairwell around to control the flow of water. This temple gave the player a reason to raise the water level. Flooding the hub room granted you access to the boss's chamber. Some players found that this was a confusing and time-consuming level, and echoed some of the sentiments players had with the water temple. However, Twilight Princess introduced new movement options that prevented this level from being a lot worse. It combined the improvements made in Majora's Mask and the Wind Waker, which resulted in a smooth water experience. The Zora armor granted decent swimming abilities, and the Iron Boots were easily equipped. Link was also able to use most of his weapons, including his sword, underwater. Skyward Sword was home to a level known as the Ancient Cistern. This aquatic dungeon featured water jets like the ones in Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. It also introduced the Whip, a new item that let you interact with some of the water-based puzzles that required valves to be released, or lily pads to be flipped. A central hub room existed in this game as well, but it felt fresh as it was a large enough room that most of your visits took place in its own little section. Very little felt like backtracking, and there wasn't much confusion as to where to go or what to do next. Although the ancient cistern featured a lot of water, most of the adventure took place on dry land in this temple. Many of us have watched The Legend of Zelda grow more refined and sophisticated over the years. With each new title, The Legend of Zelda became more complex, deeper, and corrected past mistakes. Link grew much better at navigating water, and items became easier to switch and equip. Yet, despite all of the improvements Zelda has seen since 1998, gamers just can't escape the legacy of the Water Temple. Even Zelda producer Eiji Anuma was haunted by the Water Temple. In 2009, he apologized for the Iron Boots mechanic in Ocarina of Time. He still felt compelled to apologize for it, even though the issue was corrected in subsequent games. He also stated that fixing the Water Temple was his prime motivation for the Ocarina of Time 3DS remake during an interview with Nintendo president Satoru Iwata. 
The Water Temple cemented itself into the cultural framework of Zelda by setting a new standard of difficulty. Its confusing layout, excessive backtracking, and constant waiting earned it the title of hardest level in Zelda. But maybe that's changing. In recent years, journalists and bloggers have returned to the Water Temple and found it to be not as hard as they remember, and have even gone as far as to say it had good level design. Maybe someday a different temple will come along and set a new standard for difficulty. Regardless of what level it may be, we'll always remember where it started. But what do you think? Has the Water Temple changed the way we experience Zelda games? Let us know in the comment section below, and if you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and see you again in the next episode of Game Changers. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing. I also make other kinds of videos too, like Let's Plays and Game Reviews. So if those sound like something you're interested in, go ahead and click on any of these links to start watching them now.